If you guys haven't heard by now, yeah, this is the Nick Frazier podcast, and you're getting the best genuine content out there. Right, fellas? Sure. Agreed. I'm going to take a little seat down here. Perfect. All right. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Nick Frazier Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Frazier, and uh, we're back again for another edition of the Nick Frazier Podcast. And uh, to kind of get into things a little bit, I'd like to catch up to see what I've been doing, why I haven't been posting as much, and what my time has been kind of consumed with other things. Uh, yes, I'm a part-time producer at 102.5 The Game. Uh, you can catch that on the Nashville Airwaves, obviously, at 102.5 or the alternate channel, 106.3. You could do that, um, but I'm also doing uh, producing. So produce live games, uh, producing live shows. On the weekends, you can hear from 9 to 11, uh, Michelle and Junie. I am the executive producer of that show, if you could say so. Um, but also, you know, the end of the show, there's a small little uh, picks segment, betting segment, however you want to look at it. Uh, and, yes, I will be giving up my picks there. I have done... A decent little bit, you know, for that betting segment here or there. And, you know, I just felt like, man, I feel like I need to be doing more with my podcast. Haven't been, you know, doing as much with it. Just been consumed with other things. So uh, I just felt like it was right to only come back to where I'm at. You might hear the birds chirping in the background a little bit. Yeah, in the basement, I have the garage open. It's nice weather outside. Last time I recorded a podcast, it was probably, I don't know, 34 degrees and very overcast and just cold and dark, stark, all the above. And, uh, yeah, I just felt like it was right to open up the doors a little bit, a little spring stretch, a little spring cleaning, clean the basement a little bit. It was starting to get a little dusty up in here. Uh, but, yeah, we're back. That's what I've been doing recently. Um, catch up to speed of also what I'm get, getting my uh, hands into is a little bit of Nashville SC. A lot of you know that I'm a big soccer guy. Played it growing up. A uh, little late growing up playing it. Played it in high school. Uh, recreationally before that, just backyard street soccer. But, uh, yeah, ended up playing it in high school and tried to pursue it a little bit more afterwards. And, yeah, that that pipe dream a little, a little short, if I could say so. But uh, there are other avenues to be, you know, close to the game. And, you know, covering the game is pretty freaking awesome as well. Um, I recently covered the Nashville SC versus LAFC game that ended in a 1 1 draw. Uh, Nashville SC had the opportunity to win that game. It's just. I don't know. I, it just seemed like they were getting their feet under them. Uh, all season, they've been kind of up and down. They haven't really been 100% healthy all year, uh, so that could be a little bit of a factor. I think it plays a, a decent factor in my opinion. Um, yeah, around the 55th minute, Walker Zimmerman was subbed out, and they brought on Taylor Washington to go to left back. Um, and that's where you have Daniel Lovitz, who's a natural left back that likes to fly up and down the flanks, plays a center back. And, uh, you know, Nashville SC was kind of short in depth at the center back position. And that's why they ended up signing uh, Lucas McNaughton from Toronto FC. I hope I'm saying his name right. Uh, he's pretty decent size. Um, he's a decent, I'm not running back, excuse me, wrong sport. Uh, he's a decent center back. Uh, I, I, from what I've seen, he wins a lot of aerial battles. He wins a lot of one, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, interactions with forwards. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't have anything negative to say about him right now. I haven't seen too much film on him. Uh, but yeah, from the big positives that I've seen, he has size, he wins aerial battles, and uh, he wins one-on-one -on -one duels, So which is cool. Uh, that's what Nashville C kind of needs right now. Uh, you know, with Jack Meyer being the only natural center back back there, uh, it is kind of one of those things where they have to figure out who's going to man the ship while Walker Zimmerman's, you know, Leg kind of tightened up on him the other night. So what what's the deal there? Because the first half, it was night and day difference. Uh, I was doing my own little stats here, and uh, I counted. It was three successful. He was 100%. He only had three passes that were, uh, that were you know, high-challenged. Uh, talking about Jack, by the way. Um, 
he had three solid passes. One was a little faint to the left, and I think it was a switch pass basically to the other side of the flank on the right side from my vantage point, and it went up and down. It actually created to a chance opportunity, or a, excuse me, a goal scoring opportunity, um, and it was a pretty good little play there. Uh, there was another one where he had a tight window. It was around three guys in the in the passing lane in the middle and passed it right in the middle of the honey. It was a tight window pass. I was surprised that the pass was successful. Uh, there was that one, and then there was one where uh, he was challenged by a, a guy from LAFC, the one of their forwards, and uh, had to body faint and then actually flick a pass to the left flank. It was a pretty impressive. So, like, night and day did really good. Uh, I want to say, I, don't quote me on this, but he, he missed a few, you know, one-on-one duels in the first half. But uh, for the most part, the momentum, the first 20 minutes for Nashville SC was uh, on their side. And once that 20 minutes was up, you could see the stamina kind of went down a little bit. And LAFC was yeah, kind of feeling the momentum was shifting. And then they started getting a lot more offensive chances. And that's where I felt more the fact that Nashville SC could have I don't know. They could have possessed the ball a little bit more. In my opinion, the way they were playing, they were playing long ball soccer. And long ball soccer meaning uh, they were just playing a lot of uh, champagne football where the ball was flying up in the air, playing out of the back and just kind of sending through balls from from probably their own half of the field. I'm just thinking, yeah, that can work, but it's almost redundant, and it's like, all right, let's 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 actually get something going here. I mean, you want to pass the ball and go, I get it, but at least have some build-up play. And that I think that's the, the downfall right now to Nashville SC, in my opinion, is the build-up play after a certain amount of time was just kind of elementary, if I could say so. And I was, uh, I was a bit perplexed because... You know, the first 20 minutes, like I was saying, they did so great. They were doing the the passing and, excuse me, that sounds so terrible. They were doing the passing. They were passing the ball well. They were doing a little ticky-tack of one-twos. They were getting the ball to the left and right flanks in the corners. They were creating chances. They won the corner battle first half. And then eventually, they just kind of ran out of steam around 20 minutes and then, you know, it kind of became stale from 20 minutes on. He had a couple good chances here and there, but then halftime, excuse me, the halftime whistle blew, and then the second half started, and that's when 10 minutes in, Walker Zimmerman got subbed out, and uh, you could see the game really kind of, you know, opened up a little bit. Um, I am forgetting that Nashville SC did score in the 35th minute. Hani Mukhtar, it was a weird goal because, uh, uh, you know, the ball, it was deflected, and it was off of one of Nashville SC, SC's players. I didn't see who it was, um, but it deflected off the back of his leg. He was laying on his stomach, deflected off the back of his leg. It was almost like a golf tee shot where Hani kind of just glided it in off the back, and it just it went into the back of the net. So uh, that was a big momentum shift. I totally forgot about that. Excuse me. Uh, and, yeah, from there on out, Nashville C was possessing the ball quite well, and then halftime went. And then when they came out of halftime, they did what they would normally do, and they possessed the ball well. That was the thing is that when they came out the second half, they were all in full possession of the ball. There was no turning over the possession, no nothing. And then when Walker went out, the game changed completely, completely changed. Now, let me remind you, uh, as of recording this, it's the day of uh, Nashville SC playing San Antonio FC uh, for their third round of the U.S. Open Cup. Now, the same day, which is the day I'm recording this, uh, LAFC has a matchup against the Philadelphia Union in the CONCACAF Champions League. So that was their, their first leg of the CONCACAF Champions League. So here's the deal, is that both of these teams are trying to be conservative with their substitutions because they have big games coming up, obviously. And uh, LAFC didn't make any big changes whatsoever until, uh, you know, when Walker went off, they're like, well, we could sub in Carlos Vela. Uh, they had everybody in the book forward-wise to, uh, you know, go on and win the game and so forth. And that's when you saw a lot lot more chances for LAFC kind of open up. They started winning the corner battle in the second half. They started, you know, creating chances. There was at one point when Walker was subbed off, there was, I want to say, three chances for LAFC. They had one guy surrounded by five Nashville SC players in Nashville's side of the pitch, and they would somehow get it out of their little circle they had and pass it off, and there were chances. Now, let me remind you this. Joe Willis has been in absolute 
pinnacle form this year so far for Nashville SC. He has, I believe, five clean sheets out of nine matches, and I mean, top-notch quality. I mean, he's doing great. I, I was a little hesitant about this game going into it because, you know, with so much work that he's done for Nashville SC, just keeping balls out of the net, uh, I was kind of worried because with this offensive attack. Then I realized that, you know, both teams have big games coming up, not going to play a lot of their main main key players, but um, – yeah, that, that's what I got out of the game. Uh, I really do think Nashville FC is going to play well against San Antonio FC. I'm intrigued to see what kind of, what kind of uh, I guess, play transpires during that game. Uh, I'm intrigued to see how the spacing is, how certain passing lanes will open up. That's just how I kind of viewpoint the game. But also the fact is, is that, you know, you have – not a lot of depth. So it's going to be interesting. That's why I'm intrigued about this game is that could this be one of those, I guess, the United States, I guess, calls it cup sets or the U.S. Open Cup. They call it cup sets on social media, which are upsets in the cup. I don't know. I, it's kind of weird. I'm not a fan of it, but upsets. Possible upset maybe. I don't think so. You're on your home home stadium. You're at your home stadium. You're comfortable. You're going through a like a regular game kind of pregame. Uh, San Antonio is the one that's kind of off the rocker a little bit. They don't know, you know, not familiar with their surroundings. They're playing on a good pitch, whatever. But this could be one of those kind of scrappy games where you're just like, ah, what's going to go on here? But my prediction for this game, I'm saying Nashville SC win 3-1. to 3-1 to one is kind of where I'm at. If they don't win 3-1, it'll be 3-0. I do think Nashville SC prevails and gets the win. Um and I'm going to backtrack a little bit. Let me rewind. Something I forgot about from Nashville SC's game versus LAFC. It was a sellout crowd, 30,000 plus. And um, can't forget about Dax McCarty. Dax McCarty, it was his 400th start. And uh, I got to catch up with him in his little post game presser in the locker room. And this is what he had to say. So, having such an illustrious career you've had so far, what keeps you driving week in and week out? Man, uh, that's a good question. Uh, my boys, um, I, had my, I had my whole family here tonight. Uh, my oldest son turned four on April 18th. My youngest son, his birthday's today. Um, and so, you know, we're having a joint birthday party for him tomorrow. Uh, and having, you know, my, my whole family in town, my wife's whole family in town, I had a real, um, I had a really surreal moment, you know, before I left for the game when we had everyone in my living room wishing me good luck. Um, you know, all the grandkids uh, crawling around the living room. Um, I still think back to 2006 when I, turn, <clears throat> when I turned pro. I just couldn't believe that I was on a professional soccer team. And 18 years later, I've blinked my eyes and snapped my fingers and like your whole career just flashes before your eyes and you can't believe that, you know, you're, you're at the end. So. My family keeps me driven, my teammates. Uh, the fact that I love this club and, and I still want to do something special with this club, I think that's what motivates me, that's what drives me. Um, so we're still trying to do something special this year. Yeah, so I ended up asking Dax about what keeps him driving week in and week out. Uh, you know, what what is it that just keeps him motivated? And, you know, as you heard there, he talked about his family, talked about how many people flew in to see him play this game, and talked about how both of his boys, you know, it was their birthdays. They had a joint birthday. And so you could definitely tell this guy is uh, pure class, world class. Um, he's a big family man from what it sounds like. I highly respect that. Uh, a lot of people keep forgetting that, you know, outside of the sport of soccer, outside of who they are on the pitch, um, they're human beings. And so that was a very uh, genuine answer from Dax and um, can't can't say more about it. You know, he's he's a, a class act and I only wish the best for him. You know, he really wants to do something here with Nashville and hopefully he's able to get some sort of cup run for, for the club and Hopefully they can get healthy quick and, you know, things can kind of go on to the up and up for them. So big, big congrats to Dax there on 400 and uh, many more to come. So Nashville SC, next game is against San Antonio FC. Uh, it is a Wednesday night game, so the recording of this is Wednesday. And uh, I'm predicting a big win for them. So we'll see. Yeah, next on the agenda we have a little bit of some draft talk with the NFL. Uh, Nashville uh, is, uh, you know, home of the Tennessee Titans and, 
what are the Titans going to do? That's the biggest question mark everybody's been wondering. You know, there have been the Derrick Henry trade talks, which is beyond me, honestly. I, I can't really put my head around that. I mean, I can. I understand why. But, you know, what what are the Titans going to do? Are they going to trade back and, you know, collect some picks? Is that the right thing to do, possibly? I don't know. Are they going after a quarterback? I don't know. Are they going after a wide receiver? Doesn't seem likely, but you never know. Um, could an offensive lineman be the, the solution to all these problems? It's one of the solutions. I wouldn't say all of them, but it's one of them. Yeah, no, I, I think the Titans are really in a bind here. They uh, they need a little extra help from something. I don't know. You know, they, the smokescreen stories, yada yadas, whatever. I wonder if the Titans are using Derrick Henry as a smokescreen. It's from, from my vantage point what it sounds like. And possibly going after somebody that you know people are trying to forget about. Maybe they're trying to have people forget about him. I don't know. Maybe a Bijan Robinson. Uh, I doubt it. Um, could be. I could be wrong. I don't know. Bijan Robinson. Maybe. Um, you could also say they could be going after. Uh, I don't know. Jackson Smith and Jigba. Maybe Jordan Addison uh, or Pierce Johnson Jr. I, listen, all these are question marks that need to be answered. You guys, let me know down in the comments, what are your answers to these question marks? That's what I want to know. Because the more I know from you guys, the more everybody knows, in my opinion. So, yeah, let me know down below, and we'll see what, what everybody has to say. Um, next thing that we're going to be talking about is a little bit more the Titans. They officially got a stadium deal done. I believe it's around $1.2 billion, right, I think. Let me double-check that. Uh, let's look. Let's look here. It says the Metro Council, according to Titans 24-7, the Metro Council has approved a $2.1 billion deal to build the new Titans Stadium on its final reading by a margin of 26 to 12. So there you have it. Titans $2.1 billion deal for the new stadium. That's a ginormous amount of money. I mean, that's crazy. Um, obviously, everybody has seen the renderings of the new stadium. They look pretty cool. Uh, very futuristic, dome-like. Uh, it's a square, I believe, like a square dome, which is interesting. Um, I think it, it's it's good for the city. You know, parking's already terrible. This, hang on, this is my Nashville rant. Hang on, hold on, hold the phones. Put your car in park. I am livid about the parking in Nashville. It is brutal. I went downtown probably two weeks ago for the Luke Combs concert. I didn't go the Saturday one. I went the Friday one. One, because I had to work Saturday. But Friday, I went down for the Friday one, and it was freaking awesome. Let me let me stop the rant. And I'm all over the place right now. But Luke Combs is easily, by far, hands down, the best performer I have ever seen. That was unreal. There's a reason why he wins performer of the year every year, and he's damn good. Damn good. Uh, obviously, Mitchell Tenpenny opened up for him Friday night along with Riley Green. Both of those were awesome. I had a great time. And, uh, yeah, I think I think uh, Nashville's traffic after that was pretty brutal. Now we're to my rant. I parked over off... 6th and Peabody, and I walked all the way to the Titans Stadium due to the fact that almost every street was blocked off near Nissan Stadium. Every street was blocked off near almost Broadway. Obviously, Broadway's going to be blocked off. It's a weekend, whatever. But having to park by 6th and Peabody at one of those little Scantron lots, I mean, I didn't mind the walk. I don't mind the walk. It's just the fact of the matter is, Let's fix the transportation around Nashville. If we're going to have traffic out the wazoo, can we figure something out? Like, can we get some sort of situation going? I know there was a lot going on that weekend in Nashville, but come on, man. Come on. I'm I'm tired of having to drive downtown Nashville, eat at a nice place if I want to eat down there, or just go down there to socialize. I mean, people are probably thinking, dude, why not use Uber? You know, I don't really have the money for Uber. I don't want to do that. I don't mind. I have a car. I would like to use my car. I enjoy driving. I enjoy listening to my own music. I enjoy, you know, looking around Nashville, driving downtown every once in a while. But the fact of the matter is, when there's traffic, I mean, 
I'm just going to have to accept the fact that Nashville is not Nashville anymore when it comes to traffic. Nashville is not early 2000s where you can drive downtown, go to a Preds game, come back home, and you're only doing about a 25-minute commute. Now, I remember in the early days of the Preds, you could do that. You could easily go 25 minutes from where I lived to my house to downtown easily. Now, you can still do that, but the outskirts of downtown is where things happen, where you can't get downtown. That's where the 25-minute drive stops. That's going to be my rant of the day. I am always going to gripe and moan about the traffic in Nashville. It's not just downtown. It's elsewhere. You're going out to Hendersonville. You're going out to Clarksville. You're going out to Lebanon. I mean, anywhere north of Nashville and and south of Nashville, you're going down to Franklin. You're going down to Columbia. Anywhere. I mean, you're going to hit traffic regardless, and people are going to be like, this dude's crazy. There's going to be traffic everywhere. Of course, but... Growing up with not a lot of traffic in Nashville, that that kind of bothers me a little bit. That That's going to be my rant of the day. So, uh, Nashville traffic, let's fix it, okay? So, yeah, that's my rant. Uh, next we have is a little update on what I've been doing. I kind of prefaced it a little bit earlier in the show. Uh, I've been producing a weekend show at uh, sports radio station here in Nashville, Uh yeah, you can catch it from 9 to 11, Junie and Michelle, over on 102.5 The Game. Uh, you can do that. Also producing another show on 94.9 The Fan called The League Sports Talk Show. Uh, you can hear that from 7 to 8 a.m. on Saturday mornings. So, yeah, check those things out there. You may hear my voice every once in a while on the airwaves here in Nashville. It's kind of cool. Uh, but mainly you'll be hearing my voice here on the Nick Frazier Podcast. The thing that's kind of helped me get where I'm at today, and I will not neglect it whatsoever. This is the baby. This is the home. Obviously, you can tell. Basement studio. Redesign. Making tables. Doing all the good stuff. Um, but, yeah, this is the cool thing. Um Yeah, Nashville Sounds are underway. Uh, You could go to their games. I'm trying to think what sporting events are going on here in Nashville. Obviously, the NHL draft is coming up here in Nashville. That's going to be interesting. 13 picks for Nashville. I think the first time they've had since like 2003 from one of my buddies at work have told me, which is pretty crazy. Um, Would love to see what Trotsky's got in the the bag. Obviously, David is uh, retiring as GM, so I'm pretty sure his name will still be in the fold there at and with the Preds organization in some capacity. And last on the Nick Frazier podcast, I have Meals with Meatball. Yes, a little bit of, hey, how you doing? A little Meals with Meatball for the culture. Um, so, yeah, uh, I had a little bit of some lasagna lately. I had some pasta. We had some pasta Saturday night, and uh, we had some uh, chicken fiorentine to go along with it. My nani, as usual, in the kitchen, doing the Lord's work of making everybody's taste buds so heavenly. Oh, man, the the chicken fiorentine was unbelievable. Uh, Although I didn't get a lot of it because I was covering the Nashville SC game, got home super late, but it was pretty freaking awesome. Oh, speaking of Nashville SC, yeah, for the uh, pregame dinner, I guess, they give to the people that cover the game, they had chicken teriyaki with rice and a salad. Chicken teriyaki was pretty fire, not going to lie. If I had to give it a 1 out of 10, I'd give it around like a 7.4. I mean, it was pretty solid. Uh, salad was decent, you know, average salad. And uh, the rice was not overcooked. It wasn't hard. It wasn't undercooked. It was just right. So the salad was pretty good. The rice was pretty good. It was a solid. If I had to give the meal a rating, it would be a good, like, you know, like I said, 7.4 or whatever for the chicken. So probably like a, a 7. I'm, I'm cool with a, a solid 7. That's baseline. Um yeah, Nashville nasty. I can't really think of a nasty I've had recently. Uh, I want to say, hmm. Uh, you know what? Uh, here's something. I love sweets. I love brownies. Well, I kind of used to love brownies. Uh, I love chocolate chip cookies, snickerdoodles. My problem is, is recently... Brownies have not tasted the same for me. I don't know if it's a texture thing. I don't know if it's the gooeyness because everybody loves a gooey brownie. Everybody loves a gooey chocolate chip cookie. I don't know. I'm I'm a bit indifferent about you know cookies and brownies. The brownie for me, if it's gooey, I don't want it too gooey. And if it's overcooked or not overcooked, but it's if it's not as gooey anymore and it's more on the hard side, 
I don't when I take a bite into it, I don't want it to be kind of like grainy, if that makes sense. Like it's almost like I'm still tasting the brownie batter. It's that type of grainy. So I don't know if it's just my selection of I've had terrible brownies or if it's oh, and here's another thing is when I have a good brownie, I guess it's just me getting old, but it's just almost like it's too greasy, if that makes sense. If it's a good brownie, it's too greasy. If it's not greasy, it's too dry with the graininess of the brownie. And if it's too gooey, it's just like, I don't know, it makes my stomach upset. I don't know. I See, I, I'm, I used to not care what the brownie was. I'd just eat it. But I guess because I'm getting older, my taste buds are changing, or my, I don't know, the palate is kind of starting to develop a different, you know, I guess flavor capacity. I don't know. Uh, brownies have not been great for me recently. I don't know what that's about. Uh, same for chocolate chip cookies. You know, I love me a good chocolate chip cookie. Now, don't get me wrong. If you get like a chocolate chip cookie from like a, a sub sandwich shop, yeah, they got those wrapped up. Fire. Great. Now, you get one of those giant cookies this big, still, again, fire. Now, cookie cakes, different story. Brush those off the side. I can only eat so much of those. I'm trying to think. Snickerdoodles, give me all the snickerdoodles any day, every day of the week. But chocolate chip cookies... I've had a lot of soft ones recently, and they just kind of fall like in my hand. I'm like, come on, like it's almost like with uh, Barstool when they have like the pizza reviews, like the undercarriage of the pizza is kind of you know on the more hard slash brown side. That's kind of what what I want for my cookie. You know, I want the undercarriage to be a little bit more on the harder side, but yet still soft enough. Like when you bite into it, kind of like you bite into it and just you bite right through it, like you're cutting through paper or something. You're cutting through something soft. Cutting like butter, like butter. There you go. You bite into it, it's like kind of like butter. Hopefully, it doesn't taste like butter. But uh, yeah, that's my kind of rant of uh, meals with meatball for the Nashville Nasties. The sweets have not been in my favor recently. Um, but yeah, had a really good patty melt in Lebanon. That was unbelievable. Oh my lord! It had the right amount of cheese. Had the uh, sautéed onions. Phenomenal Tennessee Tasty. 10 out of 10. Um, I wish I knew the place's name. You know what? I'm gonna look it up real quick. So the place in Lebanon that I went to for the restaurant is called Town Square Center. So my brother and I went as well. And my brother got this kind of taboo for the pizza culture. But he got this uh, honey barbecue. Is that what it was? Yep. He got some sort of like honey, uh, Tennessee honey uh, pizza is what it was called. It had like cheese, uh, honey, obviously. No red sauce, which is interesting. Uh, I think a little bit of bacon bits and... Maybe something else, but uh, it looked pretty good, smelled good. I'm just not a fan of honey, and not not a fan of sweet things on a pizza. That's just me, kind of old school. Uh, but yeah, place was called Town Square Center. Really good place in Lebanon. Go check it out, Town Square Center. You're welcome. Uh, if I come back, love it, nice, nice little patty melt, or try something different. I saw you guys had a little wood fired oven or coal fired oven. I'm all about it. So I maybe a pizza next time. I don't know. Uh, appreciate you guys for the hospitality. It was awesome. And, uh, yeah, I think that's about it for, uh, for this episode of the Nick Frazier podcast. Before I go, I have to let you guys know, I talked about this on the, on the pod recently, the new Nashville SC Johnny Cash inspired kit. I did end up getting one. Check it out. Check it out. Isn't that cool? I don't know where I'm going to hang it here. I might hang it on the wall there. I might just leave it right there. I don't know. I might be the spot for it right now. Maybe this starts filling up, but also I know people can't really zoom in on this, but recently i have been you know talking about merch and doing stuff this right here is the leather patch with my logo on it a lot of you may see and may not see i'm trying to get it closer uh but yeah ended up branding my own logo i bought a cattle brand which is kind of cool it is perfect size for branding this stuff on but uh yeah it has my logo on here you probably can't see it obviously uh back in the olden days some people may still do it now uh they might have these electrical branches where you just heat them up and you plug them in or whatever but you put this in a fire and when you put it in the fire you brand it on the leather and the result you get that so uh yeah that's what i've been doing trying to get these hats going so i'm not just buying them from some big giant distributor no i'm doing all this myself one of the fact that uh, I want people to know that the Nick Frazier podcast is the real deal, and I do this for the love of it, and uh, I really enjoy everybody that listens. I want to just kind of give you guys a little gift in some capacity of, you know, saying, hey, my gift to you guys, I actually do put in the work and do the stuff for 
all the people that listen. So again, thank you guys very much. Uh, remember, you can get exclusive content in between episodes on Instagram at the Nick Frazier Podcast. I'll be posting a lot more story stuff, a lot more clips of this, uh, and a lot more coverage when I'm at Nashville SC, so which is pretty cool. Uh, make sure you tune in to get your uh, Nick's picks for the day whenever the game is. And uh, lastly, you can check the Nick Frazier Podcast audio on uh, Apple, Spotify, uh, YouTube, you can watch and listen, and uh, Amazon Music, and um, iHeartRadio, yeah, and Google Podcasts. You can check all that stuff out there. You can type in the Nick Frazier Podcast, click subscribe, rate five stars, and uh, share with a friend. Honestly, if you just share with two people, that's all that matters. So I greatly appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Peace.